Okay, so welcome to today's call. My name's Jackie Boyle, and as always, I have the utmost pleasure of posting the esteemed Dr. Joseph Ahrens, dual nominated Nobel Prize scientist and formulator of four of our phenomenal products that we have here with the company. So today's topic, we are going to be talking about and continuing on with um, information in regards to weight management and, and how we can do that with our lifestyle choices and with uh, particular diets uh, Dr. Ahrens has been talking about uh, diets and different types of diets that we can consider and, and what that entails, uh, but he's going to continue on with that. Afterwards, we're going to do some live Q&A, so please think about um, put into the chat what your question would be, and then we'll get you to unmute and ask that question. So we'll try and get four questions in if we can, and we'll allow for that. So we'll get moving. So how are you, Dr. Ahrens? I'm doing great. I am. I'm back uh, this week. I'm in Florida and uh, I'm in a room here, an office that um, actually my first day in this office right now. And so I haven't been able to set up the lights exactly how I wanted them. But uh, yeah, it's a regular office here. Look, I've got even, you know, computers and all that kind of stuff. And so um, it pretend I pretend I'm busy. And uh, so I'm really glad to be here and I'm glad to take some time to talk more about not weight loss, uh, weight management and diets in particular. You know, we're talking about basically diets. We covered several different types of diets and I'd let people know that I tend to hang out in the uh, low carb world, paleo diet, if you will. And I cheat all the time, of course. I, mean, <laughs> I don't, I couldn't stay a hundred percent, but if you want to go down to keto, you got to drop way down to like five and 10 grams of carbs, net carbs a day. But I live in the 40 gram, you know, 20 to 40 grams of carbs. And, you know, it's a little tough, but there's a couple of things. I want to wrap up this uh, months long discussion about some concepts about weight management. And the one I think most people overlook is they just want to count calories. And that does not work. Certainly you need to reduce calories. But I want to tell you that the, the rate at which you uptake sugar, and what is sugar? Well, you know, it's every it's carbs, it's donuts and rice and potatoes, and it's not just table sugar, not the sugar just in soft drinks, sweet drinks. It's all that wheat and rice and starches and also table sugar. And there's added sugar and everything on top of that. You can't even see it. But the rate at which you take it up is extremely important. Uh, a lot of people have the misconception that the purpose of, in of insulin is to help glucose get into your cells. And actually, that's not its main purpose. Its main purpose is to store excess energy in your fat tissue for two reasons. First of all, if it's just as an energy source, and if you have a, it's a nice complex carbohydrate that is not just pure table sugar, <clears throat> its purpose is to make it available to your body and store it for energy later on. But it also, you know, we talked about uh, refined sugar, your body sees as a poison, and it also takes that perceived poison and puts it into your fat tissue. That's where your tissue stores things like heavy metals and other poisons, stores it in fat tissue. So the rate that you uptake sugar, all kinds of sugar, carbohydrates, cause is directly responsible for whether that sugar goes into the fat tissue or not. So if you take uptake sugar, even refined sugar actually, if you uptake it slowly, and then also it's in combination with fiber in your body, undigestible fiber, where it's often locked in amongst the fibers. You take that up slowly, that glucose enters your bloodstream slowly, and your insulin never shows up like a general in the warfare field here to jam it all into the fat tissue. It actually, insulin also will track that glucose, but it also it will come in, up slowly. And then you can consume that sugar, good sugar, for energy. 
I also want to remind people that sugar is required to build muscle mass. It takes energy to make protein. So you have to have some carbohydrate in your body to be able to do that. And if you're working out heavily, you need sugar for those two things, for the energy to work out, but also to build muscle, to add amino acids into the, into the protein molecules. That takes energy also. But uptake that sugar slowly. And much of that sugar will go to your brain and go to your muscles and to fuel other systems in your body without it being jammed in the fat tissue. So you can actually take the same weight of sugar and consume it slowly and also in conjunction with fiber because that interferes with your body taking the sugar out of the bloodstream. Release it slowly into your bloodstream and then Compare that to someone who takes the same amount of that sugar and consumes it very rapidly in its raw form. The one that does that is going to gain weight more than the one that didn't. So you take it up slowly. That is a, a weight, a management tip right there. Whatever carb you're going to take, take it up slowly. Take it in conjunction with fiber. So the sugar in a fruit, as an example, is much better for you under with weight management than just taking the raw sucrose fru and fructose and glucose, you will not gain as much weight. It's really important. So it's not, people say, well, you know, it's just calories in, calories out. No, that's not true. Where are those calories as carbs? Where do they end up? Where do they go? Do they end up being used up for body processes and building muscle mass and going to your brain, fueling your brain because that's your, your brain runs on glucose. 95% it just used glucose to that when you're thinking that takes sugar glucose to do that so take it up slowly don't take it up fat that also means it's better to take it at smaller amounts throughout the day always if you can have that sweetener that sugar in a meal that has other complex carbs and by that I mean the ones that are very difficult to, to digest so like in a potato a pure white Dutch potato is not very good for you compared to the ones that have any type of color, whether it's gold or yellow or, you know, there's pink ones. And uh, actually a sweet potato is not a potato at all. It's a, a root tuber. And um, the potatoes that we like, the Dutch ones that we eat, that chips are made out of, those are actually uh, modified leaves, if you will, leaf stems. They're not actually, uh, either one of them are really potatoes, but sweet potato is not a potato, but it's actually better for you. It contains a lot of sugar. It's bound up in complex carbohydrates. And even though they might have the same calories, each one of them in their sugar form, the sweet potato would be much better for you. And then the colored potatoes, and you can get potatoes of all colors, blue, pink, red, yellow, and uh, white. The white ones are the least good for you. Also, uh, rice is the same way. You know, the one, the rice that has more of the grain on it, they, that has some of the hull in there is good. Brown rice is better than the white rice, although still it's not great, but it's better than just pure white rice. Any of those things that have fiber, when you consume that, much better for you. So if you do have, oh, I, I want plain white rice, eat it with something that has also fiber in it. It's in there at the same time you chew it and masticate it, mixes it up, and it becomes more difficult for your body to just jerk that sugar out of that rice, turn it into glucose, and then you won't spike in emblems, your insulin so much, and that sugar will go to those good processes in your body rather than going straight to your thighs and your stomach and your rear end. So everybody remember that. Secondly, Consume those sugars last. Fill up on those vegetables. Again, we're back to fiber, fiber and vitamins. You remember the three things that we eat here, their carbs and their fats and their protein. There's nothing else. Everything else is things that we can't digest like that fiber. So my personally, this is what I do. I eat a lot of vegetables. I eat a lot of raw salads. I have to like them. Nobody had to force me to do it. My mother didn't have to beat me over the head to eat my broccoli. No, I, I ate it. I liked it. And then I will move on to, uh, you know, fats and meats. I used to have the fats with the meats, but there are a lot of fats that are very good for you also with weight management. 
olive oil is probably the most well-known. Uh, after that is avocado oil, walnut oil. And you can cook with these. You can cook with coconut oil, which is extremely good for you. It actually contains uh, compounds in there very close to the flavonoids that we talk about with emulin and ha have been shown to help people with, like with epilepsy. No, no, that does not contribute like fat. It's not like eating straight lard or something. It's very good for you. That particular one, coconut, not palm oil, coconut oil. You can cook with that. And no, it will not add flavor to your foods. If you cook something in coconut oil, it's not going to change its flavor profile hardly at all. So that's the way I personally do it. I, I never take added sugar. Um, I don't uh, drink our, hardly any of these soft drinks. I just don't actually happen to like them. I don't eat desserts. I know everybody's saying, wow, where'd you come from, Joe? You came from Mars or something? <laughs> you know, that's just how nature made me. Um, I just go after the vegetables and I'm well suited for a paleo lifestyle. But nevertheless, I still have that baked potato. I had one on, on Sunday. I had some steak and I had to have a potato with it. And I put on butter. Saturated fats are okay in moderation. Uh, never have margarine. Margarine is, is a deathly poison. I wish actually one of the few things I wish was outlawed on the planet are these trans fats. They come totally artificial. They do not occur in nature and they are deadly. They are heart attack city. Stay away from synthetic fats and oils like margarines. Go for the saturated fats, have them in moderation and eat lots of fiber. Um, I, you know, Jackie, looking back over these last few weeks, I, I'm just been trying to think about if I was clear on every uh, facet of our discussion. We talked about the Atkins diet, the most famous low carb diet. We talked about the paleo diet, you know, it has a little more carbs. We talked about the South Beach diet was kind of a modified Atkins paleo diet, allows a little more carbs in there. We talked about eating for uh, your blood type. Now, I know I, I got a couple of emails that said I didn't know what I was talking about. You know, I'm just sorry. I just go by data. There's no data on the planet that's shown anywhere that has been able to be reproduced that eating by your, for your blood type has any effect on your weight. So if you, and I challenge anyone, if you've got a scientific article, send it to me. I don't know about one. And you just can't say, well, you know, I know somebody who did that and they had a good job. I, I can't listen to that stuff. I just want I think, data. I think, Dr. Ferens, you know what um, I've taken away from it personally and I, from the feedback that's come through as well is that you're providing a personal uh, opinion, you know, and you've got a very valid opinion for years of, of professional um, research yourself. So, what you've given us is basically a library of information for us to make our own choices and decisions upon uh, what we choose to do with that from here. So it's been extremely invaluable knowledge that you've provided to us. Yes, it's opened up the doorways for some people to ask a question and go, well, okay, I agree or I disagree, but that's, that's we're allowed to do that. So I honestly, Well, the screen is locked up, and I hope it's you and not me. You're good, Joe. We hear you. Wow, I can't believe it. Jackie Boyle's not talking. She's speechless. <laughs> think you're going to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll have to listen to the recording to find that out. Sorry. <laughs> That's All what right. happens with technology, isn't it? All right, go ahead. Continue. Uh, well, I was just saying, I'm not sure where I got cut off at, but I was just saying that I really feel that what you've been providing to us is your personal opinion. And you've given us a lot of valuable information that comes with a lot of credibility that it, it's art made us ask questions but it's given us a choice to be able to try things that potentially that we didn't know. And, you know, 
do, is all of them going to work for all of us? No, they're not. Um, but it's certainly going to give us uh, an idea to be able to head down that pathway and go, well, you know, how many people knew that the brain ran on sugar? But there are certain ways of accessing sugars. There are good sugars, there's bad sugar. I shouldn't say there's good sugars, but I mean, there's ways of consuming sugar that the body is going to benefit from it in a safe manner, I guess, really. Um, and understanding what a carbohydrate is, understanding what a protein is, what a, um, different types of fats that there are, different types of cooking oils. I mean, you've, you've really covered a lot of different platforms of lifestyle choices when it comes to the food that we consume. So I personally, and the information that I'm getting back and the feedback from people is that it's been invaluable information that you've been providing. Well, I, uh, you know, food is good for us. <laughs> food and is beer, good for us. And B2 you know, apparently. It'll kill you or it'll heal you. And it'll kill you if you abuse it. And really, this is what we do. And everybody on this call knows all the issues about this. Most people here are, uh, some are learning new, but most of us here are professionals and uh, we understand these issues. Uh, we've got doctors on this call and they, they everything they, I say, they absolutely know. The di only difference is, this is, how I, this is what I do. I'm a physiologist and I started out in this area uh, in nutrition and then I moved into diabetes and found there was something in some natural foods that would regulate your blood sugar. And I, that was amazing. And I dug down into it and that's how we discovered Emulin. We found out there is a, vi I would like to say there's a vitamin, but the FDA in the US does not let me say that. So I say there's a vitamin-like compound that everybody needs. And it was intended by nature for us to consume along with sugar that helps us absorb it properly. And also nature intended us to, uh, to take fiber in our diet, fiber. That's one of the problems people have, like when they go into space, uh, they have these, these foods that uh, don't have much fiber in them and they have to supplement themselves with some fiber. Yeah, like Metamucil. So it's important that you, yes, eat the right things. Eat them in the right amounts. Don't eat too much of them. You know, don't go over three, you know, 3,000 calories. Come on, 1,800, 2,200 calories, depending on the size and your activity. Don't completely cut out carbohydrates. That's dangerous. You need carbohydrates to function. Your fuel, fuel for your body. Your brain needs glucose for you to think clearly. Take that sugar, if you're gonna take it, in smaller amounts, more throughout the day, rather than all at one time. Uh, that's a very bad situation that never happened in nature. We never came across a tree that had snicker bars hanging on them. I don't know of any snicker bar tree. If I did, I would plant some seeds and be a millionaire. But take moderation in all things. You know, that's an old saying. It's good for this. And also throw away the scales. Use a tape measure. Look at your body as your body composition changes. You'll notice that you'll get toned. Move, move at least a little bit. Take five steps. And then next week, take 10 steps. You know, I was... I thought I was in really good shape. And then I tried to start running 5K a day. And uh, man, I didn't hardly even make it. So I had to start over because I, I sit behind a desk all the time. But I needed endurance. That's a whole different physiology than just lifting weights, you know. You know that very well. I needed aerobic exercise. <clears throat> I needed that oxygen exchange. So I just baby steps. And then eventually, you know, I start, I was able to jog for a whole kilometer and then eventually I'm you know I can do five without it killing me but I thought I was in great shape but I wasn't so just start out small baby steps literally then just take more and more look come on I did a little short video a little while ago about went to the grocery store to buy all this poison <laughs> but I park at the far end of the parking lot people that's not a really bad thing to do those things add up they really do so I park at the far end, unless it's just downpouring rain, and I will walk all that distance to the store and then bring that poison back with me <laughs> and eat it. We're going to run out of time right away. We, we are. We, we are. 
Dr. Aaron, so I want to get Karen Small to unmute herself if she can, please, because she's got a question that she'd like to ask of you. I want to try and make this a little bit, bit more interactive today. And maybe you need to um, get on the end of a vacuum cleaner instead of um, and get some more exercise in there for the men out there. What do you think, ladies? <laughs> okay, go ahead, Karen. So, um, Doctor, I have a couple of people and uh, they asked this question. They asked uh, if, uh, if you're, if, is Emulin okay for uh, food sensitive people? And also, what about someone who has uh, is on antidepressant uh, statin and who has had abdominal hysterectomy? Okay, and she has no energy, can't hardly get out of bed, but wants mental fog, but wants to get better. Well, first of all, there is no drug um, There is no known drug interaction between the components of amylin and any known drug. That was one of the very first reasons that. Uh, how we selected these ingredients because there are uh, natural products that do have an interaction with drugs, so to speak, but there are, there's no known interaction. And in we particularly, I'm not just guessing, we particularly selected, we had like 10,000 we could choose from. And we came with a group that was uh, the most active in your body and then chose ones. There's no known drug interaction. Yes, you can take it with any known drug. Number two, these are in in amulin, they are pure chemicals. Even though we extract them from my, you know, green coffee bean, there's no caffeine in there because we just extract the pure chlorogenic acid. And sometimes we get the mericitin out of grapes, and other times we get it out of uh, japonica. But there's no grape in here. So you have to be allergic to that specific chemical itself. And we have had, and by now, you know, we have hundreds of thousands of users. We've probably had two or three people that said it upset their stomach. Uh, one person did think they had some hive issue. And I had to tell them, you know what, I'm sorry. Uh, people can, can be allergic to anything. You know, people are even allergic to their own life mates. So it can happen. But I don't know that there's any food allergies that directly linked to those three compounds and amulin, which is mericitin, chlorogenic acid, and quercetin. And the secret to amulin, <clears throat> it's not a secret, it's patented, uh, is that we found the right ratio and amounts. That's really the overriding idea about this because, and you can't get enough, in the, today's age, you cannot get them enough naturally. You just have to eat too many onions and grapes or whatever to get enough in your body. So we concentrated them. And we don't know of any allergies of those specifically. I will admit that some people say that people have a trouble with reflux. There's like five people out of these hundred thousands. And I still don't understand how they did that. I mean, I think they must have been breaking open the capsule or something. And because it, it is, if you've ever tasted it, it's like cumin and pepper and aspirin flavored combined. So I could see it burning you on the way down, but I actually take it and put it right on my eggs sometimes because it actually is like a cumin. It really does. It's a nice flavor, but I wouldn't suggest people just taking it raw. And I do know people that tried to, because, oh, I can't swallow capsules. They just break it open into their mouth. I said, no, 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 no. It's like eating raw pepper. You know, it's not good for you like that. So, yes, I'll say everything's fine in both of those instances. Okay, awesome. Um, Laurie Andrews, would you like to unmute yourself, please, and just ask your question? Sure, thank you. Um, Dr. Ahrens, I, I have um, three grandchildren that um, can't swallow, they're young enough, they can't swallow the capsules. And one of them in particular, um, we would really like to get on the emulin, but she only drinks water. So I know you've said your granddaughter puts hers in juice. And I'm wondering, we heard some rumors from you long ago, there might come in a gummy form. Is there any news on that front? Well, we're ready to do the gummy bears as soon as uh, the distributors say that that's a product they want to promote. So um, <sighs> yes, we do, but I don't know. Would she eat a citrus flavored gummy bear or raspberry flavored gummy bear? Yeah, she uh, would. You can actually try putting it right in the water and see if she'll eat, drink that. I mean, I've, I've done that myself to see what it tastes like. 
We did, um, you remember the previous distributor, you may know, we had a little bit, we had a powder that had some juice crystals in there with the amylin, and then we put that in water, but you say she only drinks water. Uh, what Which about, isn't a bad thing. <laughs> what about breaking it into some of her food? I mean, we're talking about just a little small amount if she's your granddaughter. I mean, yeah. like an eighth of a capsule could hide that in whatever she does like. Uh, you know, like you, there's, I don't know what she eats, but like I was thinking, you know, on a pork chop or something, you could just put a tiny bit on there, wouldn't even like salt and pepper. We're not talking about a lot for a small child. I mean, a yeah, full adult maintenance level is two capsules. And that, mm -hmm. for me, so it's like one capsule for 100 pounds, wow. half a capsule for 50 pounds, and a quarter of a capsule for 25. Okay, a quarter of a capsule. That's You can sneak that into food very often. We'll, we will give it another go. I, I like those gummy bears to come out. <laughs> I just, I know my, my, my daughter's anxiously waiting to hear you say they're coming. So I just thought I'd take opportunity to ask. Well, you know what? You could put it uh, in something like a, a jello, mix it right into jello when you make jello. You if you'll that. eat jello, there are some healthy jellos. Jelly or even um, porridge. That's another way. Like one of my granddaughters, they eat porridge. So they put it into the porridge and that, you know, with some honey, just natural honey. And that um, masks it as well. So might be something else to think about. Um, okay. I've got another question here. So probably one more. So I, I'm hoping I'm going to actually pronounce this correctly, but it's from um, Renteria, I think. If you could unmute yourself, please, and ask your question, that would be great. Hello. Um, I have a question about um, blending fruits in the regular blender. Is it better than using an extractor? Repeat that again, please. Yes. Is it, I guess, bad to blend your fruits and drink them that way? No, it's not bad at all. In fact, uh, any food you put in a blender, it does not destroy the fiber, by the way. So, I mean, yeah. that would be impossible. So it, you still get fiber. The fiber we're looking for is very, very in its molecular form. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't make it worse. In fact, it opens up a lot more nutrients that way. No, you can put it right in a blender. In fact, as I've said a couple of times, um, it, when I get on a, a regular routine, I just wait till two o'clock in the afternoon. I make what I call a man shake and I just put in a uh, milk or almond milk, either one, and a banana or a mango, and all the junk that I have to take because I don't like pills either. I put the amylin in there. I just put them in a hole. I don't even break them open and just let that thing go until I know all the capsule has dissolved, which is, by the way, it's a vegan capsule, so don't worry about that. And I put everything all at one time and I drank it. It's fine. No problem whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thanks, Dr. Ahrens. I think that's um, covered for what people have put in the, the chat line here to ask questions. So, and it's keeping us on track. And I do want to thank you for this series of, of information that you've given us in weight management and a different approach for us to have a look at our choices. And because it has been invaluable, like it's opened my eyes up a lot in some areas. Um, and I'm sure it has for many other people too. So if you're wanting to find the information, Dr. Aarons has got a YouTube there that we load all of the information into there each call. So you can go to the YouTube channel or direct them into his Facebook page as well, because all of the recordings are in there also. Um, so next week, um, make sure you join ask people to come in too, because we are going to be talking about, um, just to recap on what is this BSCG label? You know, what does that mean for emulin, like the banned substance control seal label? It's not just for sports people, it's for the workplace environment. So we're going to talk about that a little bit next week as well. So you can understand what you have in your hands. And Dr. Aaron's is coming from the man that's created the product that he's able to share with us how we can, um, how it can benefit you potentially, you know, how can assist and support the body, not just professional sporting people either. We're looking at kids that play sport. Uh, we're looking at anybody that does any sort of physical activity in a gymnasium. Uh, we're looking at people that go into the workplace environment that potentially now more than ever uh, are being drug tested. So this is where this BSCG seal, um, the banned substance control seal at Emulin M, um, has been approved for. 
is really important to understand in regards to sharing this with people because it's it's a, a massive um basically it's a massive plus for people to know that they are safe in being able to take this natural food-based product so dr Aarons, have you got anything that you'd like to recap on today's call before we finish well you know you don't need emlyn to get proper weight management uh, but i want to tell everybody you need to start out healthy and uh, no matter what you're going to do, your body needs to be all it can be. And everyone does need amylin. Get your carbohydrates under control before you go on this journey. Take amylin. Uh, I know a lot of people, they're all over the world, and sometimes it's harder to get in some places than others. We're working on that. We certainly are. Uh, actually, Jackie and I talk about that every single day. And we're working on those, those issues. But everybody, take amylin. And then your carbs will be managed, even if they're bad carbs, it'll be better than not. Your body won't think they, that, that sugar's poison and you won't go into chronic low-grade inflammation. Emlyn for everybody from cradle to grave. And I thank again, everybody for being on this call. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahrens. And more importantly, thank you to each and every one of you that have joined us today. And for those that watch this call and share it with others, we truly do appreciate you because you are our voice of being able to get the word and the benefit of, of this important call and Dr. Ahrens' um, knowledge and also his creativity in creating Emulin and 24-7 out into the world and the importance of what it can provide for people in assisting in our general health and well-being. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahrens, and have a great Halloween, everybody. Um, <laughs> I, should, I should have dressed up and done something a bit zany, but um, I hope you um, you do some trick-or-treating on the weekend over there. I know we, we now have adopted it here in Australia as well. So um, happy Halloween, everyone, and thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Thank, thank you, Jackie. Bye-bye, Dr. Ahrens.